In high school halls, where their love first sparked, Caitlin and Jack, your journey embarked. Ten years have passed since that fateful start, a love that blossomed never to depart. We knew from the start that Jack was here to stay. He ruined Mum's tablecloth, he had a bill to pay. You treat Caitlin like a princess, which is all we can ask. We know it can be a difficult task. You make her so happy with all that you do, and it's obvious to see how much she loves you. In a house full of girls with only our dad, you quickly became the brother that we never had. Well, he's well, no Bradley Cooper, Cooper, but can we just say we wouldn't have our brother-in-law any other way? And now on to Caitlin, oh where do we start? Our wonderful sister, so kind, fun and smart. Can we all take a moment to admire her beauty and give us a cheer if you think she's a cutie? As young naive kids, we didn't always get on. A hairbrush, a bleeding eye, I think you know the one. But as we grew up, we started to see we were never on our own. We're forever a three. Caitlin said to me, Dad, don't say anything stupid. Don't be silly. Don't embarrass me at all. On the other hand, Lynn said, just be yourself. <laughs> Caitlin, since the day you were born, you've made our lives so much better. I love you, Cariad, and you're such a wonderful, intelligent, caring person. You're very passionate, and Jack's very lucky to get you as a wife. Caitlin, I hope I haven't been too silly. And I was never going to embarrass you. Not that I didn't have enough uh, material. As I've got photos of you running naked through the park in France, dressing up as a telly tubby, or you in your Dalmatian coat and hat. But you don't have to worry, because I haven't really had copies or any PowerPoint presentation. Those images I stole here. And I look at them every day. You make me smile. You remind me of all the fun and laughter we had. And I thank you. I could never have dreamt that nearly 12 years ago, when I first laid eyes on you in biology class, that I'd be stood here today as your husband. You're the person I love most for so many reasons and in so many ways. And I feel so lucky to have married you, my best friend. It's been almost two years since I popped the question at the top of that hill in the Lake District. And still to this day, it's the best decision of my life. Thank you for marrying me and for continually making me the happiest man alive. Could everybody please, before she changes her mind, <laughs> raise a glass to my magnificent new wife. To Caitlin. Mr. Mr. can you stop for me? I ain't got much besides this guitar. I didn't really want to do this speech, but I thought it might be the only chance I get to get a meal and some drinks paid for by Jack. Jack really could do no wrong at home. Our mum used to say he was kissed by an angel due to the blonde patch on his head. This obviously was utter nonsense. And it should have been a dead giveaway that he was always going to be the golden child. Caitlin's been lucky enough to get the best traits from Lynn and myself. Her beauty, her intelligence, and her caring nature she obviously gets from me, and the silliness and the sense of humour she gets from Lynn. When Jack and Caitlin became a couple, I heard from my parents that Jack had a new girlfriend, and I realised quickly that she must be special, as she was loved immediately by our mum. This was remarkable, really, because no girl will ever be good enough for my Jack <laughs> was an often heard phrase in our house. Any 
anyone who knows Jack, he, he's a fantastic dentist. Uh, it first hand. But also, he's literally a jack of all trades. Right? He, he can turn his hand to anything. He can do plumbing, carpentry, floor laying, gardening, golf. Well, maybe not the golf. I did have another joke about the industry, but I got to be honest, I, I don't think it's the appropriate time. No, I, I, I can't do it, to be honest. It's a bit late now. I should have done it at 2.13. Well, if you can't say a dad joke when you're father of the bride, when can you say a dad joke? There's an unwritten rule of wedding etiquette that states nobody should look more handsome than the groom. And on that note, I'd like to thank my three ushers, uh, <laughs> Matt, Frankie and Zach. <laughs> Jack was always very hard working and he achieved academically. He was also musical, playing the corner in the school band, and all the teachers loved him. He was quite the nerd. I've always told Jack that if Caitlin had met him just a couple of years earlier, in his dorky trumpet playing phase, there is no way they would be together today. I've since been informed that Caitlin was also a band geek who used to sneak her corner into school in a Jane Norman bag. As time went on though, it became clear that Jack and Caitlin were a really good fit for each other. Caitlin bought Jack out of his shell, and Jack he didn't really have to do a lot because Caitlin was already a normal person. <laughs> <laughs> He's always been thoughtful, reliable, kind and calm. All qualities that are making a great husband to Caitlin. He's also a dedicated dog dad who's very good at ignoring the fact that Caitlin is clearly Bella's favourite. <laughs> Wish you both lots of love, happiness and dogs in the future. Please join me in standing and raising a glass to the newlyweds, to Jack and Caitlin. Cheers.